Well, there you go, guys. First game of the day. Kind of a banger, and I think it's worth talking about a little bit before we actually get into our Rally Cry halftime show. Josh, I want to start with you. What really stood out to you there? I mean, the big question for us was, were Scary Jerry and Zyko going to be able to stamp up in that game? Yes. Take a look at the damage numbers. Like, on the one hand, they are incredibly inflated because it is an Ezreal as an uncontested poke champion in this game, but it was worth noting that the pressure that Scary Jerry was putting on to the rest of the members of Wildcard did give them a ton of space around a lot of these objectives. And the fact that he was also able to win the majority of lane, we saw a level two hit early, was constantly chunking out Don Bray, who we had kind of questions coming in. We felt like even though we saw a full series yesterday, we didn't quite know where he was at with the team. The team looked good. But what was he contributing to the team? I'm not a fan of this combo. I do think that if you're going for the Zero, you want the Yumi. I don't think the Melio pairs as well. And I, I was especially punished here. But also, in general, Don Bray was oftentimes out of position, kind of frontlining a little bit for the team, getting poked out by that Ezreal and Yumi yeah. combo. So, yeah, I think looking at Don Bray going into game number two, try, try and play a little more safe if you're in this kind of a compositional setting. Yeah, I definitely want to highlight the fact that Wildcard likes to play things similar to the style that Maryville did in this game, which means that they are very comfortable playing as, but not necessarily playing against this kind of style. I think if you aren't going to have the Kha'Zix on your own, you now know that you cannot give it over to Auto Rush. Fair enough, there you have it. Nice summary of a 40-minute game to start things off. And uh, while we wait and get the next game set up, we are going to come to our Halli Rally Cry halftime show. Excuse me. Kangas, you might remember this game, but there's going to be a little bit uh -oh. of a twist. We're going to be uh -oh. playing Better Tic Tac Trivia. Better <laughs> Tic Tac Trivia? What are you, what are it's better about? because you, I'm doing it. my version of the show? I mean, what is this? I mean, yeah, I, I thought that was right very now. obvious. Wait, here, we're we going to have a side-by-side -side comparison. I, I have this prepped. This, this, oh, was yeah. last, this was last time's Tic Tac Trivia. Oh. Nah, yeah, sorry, I'm like sorry. Rocked in this game. sorry, that 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 one's that one's trash can. I guess I'm sorry. I'm sorry to inform what? you because I wanted to be very clear that today is Father's Day and I am indeed your daddy. <laughs> well, so now you're definitely cosplay because you're disappointed. So we'll see what happens <laughs> going into this one. Well, this, this is what you're saying is better. This is what, yep. What? Uh, I'm sorry, Kangas. It's mm. just very simple. It just looks like a hashtag. I mean, this isn't is that what Tic Tac Toe kind of is? All right, well, let's see what you have planned. Maybe the content will be better. Maybe, maybe the visuals yeah. are just lacking a little bit. But once Steve, we I just feel like potatoes. all that we've done so far in the halftime shows for uh, Summer Split is just take all of your ideas. And <laughs> get hey, whoa, production. hold on, hold on. You stole that <laughs> from Cubby. So let's not, I stole let's not get it Cubby. twisted like you have all the best ideas, Kangas. Anyway. I was the one that came up with Tic Tac Trivia, though. Really? I was told you stole it. What Slander. is art but stealing? Slander. <laughs> well, everything True. is derivative. And honestly, it probably was a conversation that was had at some point. But I, I was the first one to do it, at least. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> you know what? Fine. I can definitively say that. Maybe the seed was planted by somebody else. Maybe, but... maybe. All right, we yeah, can't take that away from you. But because of all uh, the flaming and all that, I'm going to let Josh go first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, I, guess, I guess the big question too, you is, know? right, <laughs> Steve, Steve might not have been the one to plant the seed, but he was the one to give the birth, you know, so at least he's mommy for this one. <laughs> Please pick a spot, Josh. Uh, right, I guess. Right middle, right Center top. right. Center right. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> at Maryville University was the first seed from the spring qualifiers to... Please don't I mean, say one seed qualify anymore. Quiet. Uh, what... They got the number one seed by an overwhelming margin. There were 250 points available for the qualifiers teams based on how many wins they got. How many of those did Maryville earn? Ooh, I think it was... Oh, I heard this number a couple of days ago. I think it was 210. Ooh, sorry. It is not. Uh, I will... Uh, hmm. mm. I'm just going to leave it blank. We're going to give Kangas <laughs> a chance to, can uh, to answer that one later. I will what reuse this? this question. What do you mean? You say better to... Cynthia, remove the better right now. If this is all we're doing, <laughs> at least mine has player photos on it. Beat down. Yours doesn't even have that. What are you doing? All right, give me doing? the top left one. All right, Does it even matter? Go. Yeah, I mean, what do you mean? Of course it does. All right. All right. I'm making so... an enemy of the host right now. This is probably a bad <laughs> idea, but this is also just I mean, my usual vibe, so... It could be, it could be worse. You could be making Make an enemy a bad fraud. Today. Ooh, True. That is worse. Never make production your enemy. I have our world upside down. Since oh, yeah. it worse. <laughs> See, I'm friends the with production, direction. so obviously this is going great. 
Anyway, oh, he said top left. He did say top left. Angus. Yeah. So, so give me two of the last four teams Zamudo played on. Two of the last four that Zamudo played on? Yeah. Uh -oh. if you want to be if you want to be an overachiever, you can give me all four. Well, I might struggle to give you one because I'm drawing a blank right now. He was on an AOE roster, but I don't remember which one. I'll accept there's AOE. A lot of, there's a lot okay. of AOE. Just there's, 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 there's a lot, lot of AOE. And honestly, there's that's probably like the easiest answer you can possibly give. <laughs> uh, <laughs> AOE wildcard or supernova? The B3. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's go with supernova. I, 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 why not? Uh, no. Nah. Can I but steal? No, we don't do steal. Actually, you know Dang. what? Fine, we'll do steal. <laughs> Wait, okay. Does Steve have a chance to steal the right one? Oh, hey, Beaton, you know what would make your segment a little better? No. If after I got it wrong, you go. But you don't Ooh. have that, so I don't know. I, don't know I actually think that. what would make my segment better is if you weren't here. <laughs> this is the most combative test we've ever had. I'm loving it. Okay, I know two of them that Zamuda was on was one of them was AOE for sure, because yep. uh, you said you'd accept that. <laughs> and the other one was third party. Was that yes, where I first was. found him? Yeah. Okay. Oh, congrats, Josh. That. You got the first Woo! one. Would not have gotten that. All right, now what is the image that we're going to be using? I really want him to just draw an X with his mouse. I, I think that's what he's going to do. I, 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 I can't. It's an image, so I, I'm just going <laughs> to... Wait, it is? All right, let's see it. Um, ding. Ding. He's, he's making something up right now. <laughs> oh, it's just the circle. All right, you know what? That's all right. Also, check this out. Congratulations, Josh. Thank you, oh. Steve. You, 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 you got All right, it. Angus, what do you uh, what do you got for me? Well, that one was mine, and then I got oh, it wrong. Right, and he that's right, that's right. So does that mean it goes back to him or back to <laughs> Josh, me? Josh, uh, you need okay. to you need to sub to more channels. I think you need to give some subs in order to get better. True. Uh, let's go. Let's go for the center. All right. Uh, where is it? Where Actually, is it? yeah. Why did I go top left? The center is. Like I correct. went center right, so like you know. <laughs> that's a that is worse also than than a quarter piece. Uh, All right. So your question is about odd orange, Josh. Okay. He, as we all know, have played in the academy system in years mm -hmm. past. Yeah. What teams did he play on? I want to oh. hear both of them. I that's know it. one of them for sure. Mhm. Mm well, the one that's easy is Team Liquid. True. Um, because I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk to him after games. Um, you don't know the other one. Oh, that sounds oh, like I'm gonna, knows I'm gonna the take other this. One. I'm gonna I take think... this one then. I want to say it was Dignitas. Ooh, uh, unfortunately, it was not Dignitas. That is not correct. Uh, all right, Kangas, time to steal. Hey, we were talking about Odd Orange, right? Yes. Thank God. Okay, I, I missed that part, <laughs> but then I, I kind of got there. Echo Fox Academy, baby. My the ghost. The first ever split of the Academy system back when it was the Academy system, and he was there. There you go. Oh, that's what it was, right? Because he was in between. He was on Radiance. That's true. He was. I got it. It's not even a real PNG. <laughs> it's not. It's okay. A you know what? PNG. You know what? Now I will admit this is better than mine. That just made it better. Now, now you now you earned it, Beatdown. Thank you. I guess. Um, wow. All right. All right, Josh. Oh, take your pick, stuff. Steve. All right, Steve. Content. I keep getting this mixed up. Steve, it's your turn. Oh. All right. I'm the X. Okay. Yeah, you stole. Um, remember? Good times. Give me. Two. Your who's Give me top right. Or this, guess, yeah, top right. You're good. Th this um, one. This one. Historically, <laughs> what? Who is uh, Get Back's most played champion? Get Back's most played champion. Yeah. Like in all time? All time. Oh, I don't know when he was playing in O's. Um, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Ari. No, no. Josh, thoughts on stealing? Oh. Uh, that was going to be my guess, too. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, let's see. What else has he played? He's played a lot of Syndra over the years. I've seen him play a lot of Azir. Yeah, if it's this year, it'd also be We're Running out of time. This is for the win, boys. Okay. Um, LeBlanc. Oh, it's LeBlanc. Let's go. You're actually the GOAT. Why? No, did you make that circle smaller. Yeah. I'm making it smaller. Anyways, oh, we are no, running out of time. You can win right here. Oh. Top, top, top. Give me the center one. Quick, quick, quick. No, no, we actually, we Dang really, it. we really need to go, actually. So we're just going <laughs> to go ahead and uh, that's going to call the game there. Josh is the ultimate winner of all time. Woo! Steve, you no, son, you take it. it away to game two of the next it. one. I deny, I deny this win. There's no way. Stop the vote, <laughs> Joshi. 
I could have come back from that one. You were going to get that wrong. I was going to steal. Then I was going to win because I would have had a line too. You want to so. know why I guessed LeBlanc, Steve? I, no, I do not know. Because you want to know what the highest, uh, highest, what's it called, present support of all time is? Support? Yeah. Uh, Alistair? Nautilus? No, it's LeBlanc. You know why? It's been played twice as support throughout history, and it is the most banned champion throughout all of history. So it counts as a support. <laughs> so get Rex. That doesn't... It, what? Both That's people play why you said it? LeBlanc. He's a mid laner. It doesn't make sure. <laughs> It's great. But anyway, welcome to everybody who's coming over from Europe. If you are coming back, it is the wild card that you guys all knew and love. But unfortunately for you guys, Moose Hater is gone. He's gone. We replaced him with someone that plays all kinds of crazy stuff too, Zamudo. We've seen him play the Karthus top. We are still waiting for things like the Draven and Aphelios to come out. But for now, yeah. they've already picked up their first win. Or excuse me. They actually dropped their first game of today going up against Mary. And that, uh, I will say, I'm going to call Zamuda uh, eight, six games of Gragas. Gragas. Does not Boring. live up to the hype that Moose Hater brought. So we're still waiting for Zamuda to bring out a couple more of those fun picks. But it will not be the Gragas yet again, as Maribel are banning that one. The collegiate representative and the only collegiate team in the Challengers League circuit right now. And they have a win on the day. Looking Ooh. for that 2 Oh, locking in the Vi first. Answered by the Zyra Khan. Yeah, and we see that wild card, right? We were playing a game of chicken in game one. It's like, who's going to take the Yumi? Who's going to take the Melio? And it turns out that uh, Maryville did end up getting the better of that trade. But this time, wild card saying, nope, we're going to go with Zaya. We now have something that is going to be significantly less susceptible to any pressure that Odd Orange is going to be putting out. The Vi is available. The Zaya is now hard to take down. And we go back to a previous pairing that we were talking about for the Zeri. It has been the Yumi throughout most of summer, but during spring, people knew that it was the Lulu that you really wanted to give over with the Zeri. And as Red Side, you basically have three choices in pick ban. You have to ban Nico. That's just mm -hmm. guaranteed. And then you can choose. Do we ban, do we wait to see if they ban Melio Whoa. or Yumi? And if they do, ban the other one. And then hand, like, neither of us get it. Do we handshake and not ban it, or do we ban both? They went for both. I know that you want to talk about the Amumu. It's a weird pig locked in, one of Kiel's kind of pocket picks. Yeah, and the interesting thing, I love that as soon as they pick it, they instantly pair it with banning Silas away, not giving an opportunity for Get Back to play that, because while it's not his most played, it is something that we have seen Get Back play a lot of, especially at different points in spring and last summer. But this Amumu actually has a pretty decent uh, opportunity to play up against this area. This feels like wildcard just picking things that counteract what it is that Maribel wants to do. The Zaya is specifically here to counteract the Vi. The Amumu is specifically here to counteract the Zeri. You have this massive AoE stun, and it forces Scary Jerry to try and take cleanse. Yeah, you're almost guaranteeing that. I mean, Ghost is preferred on the Zeri, but against this amount of CC, the charm from a Rakan, the yep. CC lockdown from an Amumu, you really do want that cleanse. And I honestly would not be surprised if Wethcar just continue locking in. These champions will try and dive on top of you. LeBlanc is still on the table. They could go back towards that for Saligo, give even more kill threat onto an AD carry like Zeri. It is definitely a spot here where we will see Wildcard try and find a couple more tools to be aggressive. This is part of why you pick characters like Zayai and Ezreal, so that you can leave them alone and say, hey, have fun, you're doing your own thing, but they are going to be getting this Azir. Now, we saw yesterday, Saligo made a couple of big plays with this champion, sometimes going a little bit too aggressive, but you have a ton of ability to play with range, and you will be outranging the Zeri whenever you actually go in for these team fights. The only question is, the lane phase kind of sucks for this champion right now, and... You probably actually can build static shield on this character now that I think about it. I mean, I was... I was Let me look it up, let me look it up. It. I don't know if I like it, though, because I don't believe that the soldiers do any of the AD ratios they uh, on their attacks. I believe it's fully AP. Yeah, so they, they are not auto attacks. Yeah, so you're, you're not getting any value from the AD. It's just the attack speed and then the passive, where typically the people that like stack shift the most, if they're AP champions, are ones that still get some benefit. LeBlanc still auto attacks often. Even Akali loves that because the Q has, a, I believe, 60% AD ratio. So things like that, where you know you still get some value out of that AD. It will be the LeBlanc for get back this time around. That means a blind pick for Niles goes back towards the signature NAR. Yeah, it is worth noting, as this Draven Hover is real, so is this Akshan Hover, uh, we have changed the ratios on Azir. It used to be like 60, right? But recently, it had another mini rework where the Q does significantly less damage, and we see an Akshan coming through. It's locked in. I love it. This is going over to Zamudo. He's known for playing a lot of Marksman top, the Draven, the Aphelos, and the Akshan, some of his most played. 
we are finally seeing it. We were hyping this up even before the first week of Challengers League when we had our first meeting. That was a big thing. It's like, Zamudo's in the league. This guy plays crazy things in the top lane. And then we got six Gragas games like, in a <laughs> row. Thank you for banning it, Maryville. So we finally get to see Zamudo on something a little more exciting yeah. here. Countered into the NAR. So range versus range matchup. How do we feel about Akshan? Uh, build path meta wise, do you have any insights into this? Because I know he's not like a super popular champion. Yeah. Now, I have not seen a ton of Akshan top recently. The other players that I think of when I see Akshan top are Darshan, who was a major player of it when he was sure. on CLG. And then also Lorlo was a major player of it throughout his time as a streamer and also when he's been over in Korea playing in solo queue there. And so typically what we see, this is actually a really good matchup for Akshan because the basic idea in his top lane is if you get three auto attacks down and Dar gets three auto attacks down, well, Zamudo has a shield once he does that, whereas Niles does not. And so every single time they go in for a trade, Zamudo should be winning that. But the big risk here is that Zamudo has way less reliable mobility. You have to be next to walls in order to make sure that you can get away from odd orange. And so that's going to be the trade off. Both top laners know that Zamudo is going to be trying to push up and be really aggressive in this lane or try and set up a freeze so that Niles has to come to him. And that means that both junglers are going to be really focused on making sure that Niles can stay in the game. I love how we saw the whole, oh, you locked in Vi, well, we'll go for Zaya. But then we'll also give you another AD carry to hold on top of instead, basically. So yeah, eyes on Auto Orange, what he's able to do. Let us know in Twitch chat who you're rooting for, MU or WC for Maryville University and Wildcard, respectively. Maryville picking up the first win. On pace to go for what Scary Jerry was saying their goal was, 3-3. Three and three. Slow start for them so far in summer, but I still think that it's... Nice to hear realistic expectations from the team as to how they see themselves scaling up throughout the yeah. split. I want to have a fun stat for you because normally, like solo queue, who cares? It's a, uh, it's solo queue. What do you think Akshan's win rate against Nar Top is in Platinum Plus? Oh, Platinum Plus. Um, yeah. in 165 games. <laughs> That's not not that many. Uh, yeah, for Akshan, it's kind of a lot. Yeah, true, true. I'm going to it's say as Donbrey goes for an aggressive trade on Zyko, winning out on that one so far. I'm going to guess above 60%. Let's go like 63% for a shot. That's actually really close. 64% coming Ooh. through. And we can see exactly how aggressive Zamudo can be. Forcing Niles to go for an early back, even with the plate footwork. At least Niles is going to be saving that potion. On the other side of the map, look at this aggression again. Okay. Cleanse used by Scary Jerry early to get rid of the Ignite. Don Bray hard committing to that. Zaya Rakan level one is very powerful together. Jerry, Jerry, and Zyka will also be down summoner spells. That's heal from the Lulu. Yeah. I mean, this is a lot of pressure coming out from the side of Wildcard, right? This was one of the places where we were going to be asking, can Lens and Donbre, uh find winning situations against Scary Jerry and Zyko, or will Odd Orange be able to have enough pressure in game one? We saw that Scary Jerry and Zyko didn't really need a ton of help to start it off as a Mudo. I mean, look wow, at that. The shield comes through. Niles goes for an auto attack trade and gets nothing back at all. Right? This is such a tough matchup for the Nar to play against. And what we're seeing, Odd Orange is now going for the Wolves. He probably has to go for this <laughs> Scuttle Crab on the top half in order to try and save Niles. But instead, he's moving towards the bottom half of the map. Three minutes on the timer, and Niles gets his first CS of the game. Got hard chunked out, had to back, TP into lane again with no items purchased and is really feeling the pressure that Zamudo's outputting. And Auto Orange goes all the way to the bot jungle, so there's not backup coming Niles' way. At the same time, Kiel is moving towards the top half of the map, but Zamudo, confident in where he has put the minions, is going to be resetting, coming back to lane. And, I mean, as the wave comes back in, this is where the Ignite, the Coal, comes in. They will have a lot of opportunity to try and pick up Niles as the wave does bounce through. And so, wild card. Taking a bit of a page out of what has been Cloud9 Challenger's playbook, right? They get winning lanes kind of across the board and use that to win the game from there because they are super far ahead. This is actually a much more fluid, a much more chaotic game than a lot of the things that we have been seeing coming out from Wildcard. They won this style of game yesterday. We also got to see that Maryville, very comfortable in it as well. It's how they beat Wildcard the first time in the series. I like how you talk about 
you know, wild chaotic solo lanes, and we wild got an Azir mid lane for <laughs> Saligo. But sorry, that doesn't fit my narrative. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. As a fellow caster, sometimes you know we just have to lie. Get back. <laughs> does trade against Saligo in the mid lane. Chunks him out a little bit more right there. As Keel will get the bottom scuttle crab. Also got oh, the top. Oh, Psycho crab. gets it. Oh wait, what? Psycho gets it with the health oh, picks. That's some support gameplay right there, baby. Let's go, Psycho. Oh. Wait a minute. Get back. Ooh, getting real aggressive on the Saligo. Keel now realizes this. Flashes up for the LeBlanc. Keel using the bandage shots to get into the wave and just keep Saligo alive. Yeah, get back. He's looking about to come over this wall. Oh, this is dangerous. Okay. okay. Ooh. Wow. Lots of play coming through. Oh, the glitter lands. Does a lot. <laughs> Saligo barely alive. Just wants that last minion. Will now Orange go top, for the reset Orange and can teleport back into wave. But meanwhile, Odd Orange going top lane onto Zamuda. That's flash out from the Akshan. Yeah. That's I mean, a that's Chicago the ping diff right there. I mean, the big thing, though, is Odd Orange does a really good job of locking the way to the wall, right? Because Akshan will stop upon impacting the enemy champion. The mobility is not very consistent coming out there. And so Odd Orange forces the flash, but it does mean that Zamudu does stay alive. And again, very fluid game. Both sides going for a lot of fighting. And Wildcard, because they have more pressure on the map, because Dawnbreak could 1v1 Zyko if they found them in the middle, will be able to go for this early dragon. Very early dragon for wild card. No contest from Maryville. Odd Orange is back on the top half of the map, clearing out the jungle camps. Let's see if he commits to camp, er, pathing bot lane, because without Flash on Zamudo, there is a potential world where you go for the re-engage. We do have Flash still on Odd Orange, so he could look for a Flash Vault Breaker, but no, Niles actually pushes the wave in. We can see on the mini map. Looks like he's going to shove Zamudo yeah. under his own turret instead. I'm also going to give a shout out to uh, Alk Batter, who had this call out earlier, right? This is what happens in my solo queue game. Like, oh, cool, I went for a uh, gank top lane, got the flash. All right, I'll see you in five minutes. No, his flash is down. Come hell, help me. This is how we kill him. This is what we need to see from Audrange. When he hits level six, I'm going to be looking at where he actually goes with this pressure. Will he go top lane? Will he help out Niles? Because if Audrange falls behind, not a real champion. Dombray lands and engage on the scary Jaren gets out of there. Yeah, it's those little decision-making trees that I see from players that from an outside perspective, from the bird's eye view, we see a wild card on the dragon. We know exactly what's going on, and we can make the plan for Maryville. When you don't have that perfect information, it can be much harder to come to the same conclusions of, hey, Zamuda's alone up in the top lane. We can just go for that re-engage. Niles clearly had the call that I want to shove this wave in, and now he's actually in a really awkward position because the wave's frozen. Zamudo's keeping it there. Heal is around, and while Niles will see, see Keel on that wave, he's going to have to walk away from this and get even further behind in the wave clear. Yeah, and it looks as though Keel seems to know. Yeah, he throws down the uh, control war to make sure that he can't get it. This is a two-level difference. Okay, okay, now it's a one-level difference. Yeah, Zamudo walks up. Doesn't actually get that much damage traded in there. Looks it was like traded for zero. Bounced off of Zanar. Yeah, it technically yeah. Was traded for zero, so... Uh, no. It's not like an end of the world. And he's just keeping Niles off of this cannon minion. Misses the cannon minion, doesn't even get the XP from it. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing that is super, super dangerous and something that feels like a bit of a lost art in uh, competitive play is the ability to find these positions. This is how the concept of the Flame Horizon came out in the first place. But Odd Orange is now level six. They know there's a control word in the tri brush, but gonna try and find something a bit more exciting as now it's close to level, close to the big ult. Backs here, and they just commit onto Zamudo. Still no flash on the Akshan. This is the nice. danger of the carry in the top lane. And first blood picked up by LeBlanc. Really good stuff coming out from Odd Orange. Flashing to get in range of the ultimate to make sure that they can take down Zamudo even after all that distance was created. That's a different champion. Most champions are not able to keep up there. But still, Wildcard, they're the ones who are now hitting the top lane. They know that Otto has no ultimate. They know that Niles is now mini and a little bit exhausted. His refractory period means that he will not be able to ult again for this fight. Good window here for Wildcard to make good of a rough position, rough situation. Because that kill for get back means that LeBlanc will be getting towards the item that must not be named a little bit faster here, already towards that kind of 800 gold breakpoint. Next bank should have it. Yeah. Let me double and that check means that, that number, the waves will get very hard for Saligo to control. Yeah. It has been really impressive, right? Remember when Saligo was basically dead and still hanging out in the mid lane? Because he did that, he needed to get, that was like 10 minions that he was yeah. able to recover. But now Zamudo is still strong enough to fight Niles. Throws out the ignite. Ooh, big swing. 
Niles has Mega. Does not have the ultimate available, though, and will run away. Yep. Still able to get out the ultimate. The compens not going to be enough damage there for Zamudo. But again, reestablishing the freeze and demanding that Odd Orange comes back top lane to try and make this happen. We can see that even with the first blood going over, it's not as though they are building a big lead. The fact that Zamudo has prevented Niles from farming as well as they have definitely puts uh, Maryville in a position where there's still a big question of how they're going to be dealing with this auction later in the game because the matchup gets a little bit easier as the game continues but Zamudo in a side lane situation where you are trying to deal with the Kha'Zix can also just deal with Niles very very effectively and so we will see kind of a split or an inverse of what we saw in game one where Niles was really hard to manage. Big thing for me is can you also deal with a LeBlanc because the back has now completed that static shift. So these waves will be melting left and right, which means Gibbeck can get on the map. Speaking of, he's just fighting Saligo. Flashes from the Emperor's Divide. Saligo gets aggressive on flash. him. Can get back turn to play right now. One auto, chains don't land. Saligo survives yet again with a sliver of a health bar. Yeah, Saligo is honestly so confident looking every single time, right? Just making sure that they wait as long as possible. And now Odd Orange coming around the side trying to finish the kill. Oh, throws up the ultimate. Here comes Don Bray. Not in time, though. Will lock down Odd Orange for a little bit, but wasn't under the turret. Trying to body block this Vault Breaker. Does so. And you have the damage. Just buying time for Lens to come in. And Lens will claim the kill credit. Yeah, I wish it was Lance, but it's Keel, right? It is the Amumu that is the one who actually grabs oh, yes, all yes. of that money. But still, not bad if you can keep Keel very tanky. That will help out quite a bit in terms of trying to create all these opportunities for fights. But Saligo just standing and firing. This is something that a lot of mid laners will not do because they expect, like, oh, they did a lot of damage. But wait, we know he flashed that. the IG logo when he did it. Wait, that was insane. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. But he knows that when LeBlanc throws out these abilities, they don't have the ability again. And Saligo likes taking these longer trades. If Odd Orange wasn't here, he gets away just fine. You see Don Bray's pause right here. It's because he was using the E. He was waiting yeah. for the Battle Dance to get him on top, give that shield over. And if he was a little bit closer, does actually find that save there for Azir. Still finds the kill anyway. Gives it over to the jungler and allows kill to reset as well. Now we're back into the mid lane, though. Oh, Saliga did a great job to start it off, but right when we're back to live, Odd Orange and Get Back find a window to just 100 to 0. Yeah. And this is huge, right? We saw that Saliga was getting the better of Get Back in the laning phase in game one. Now that Odd Orange has given two kills over to Get Back, he's already got the, you know, the super lightning carrot. He's already got the tools to try and push around and we saw how good get back was at all the charms in game one this is a game where get back is set up to be the primary carry and wild card they're the ones starting this but this is three four here's a teleport Ooh, Don Bray tried to jump on a scary Jerry was spaced out teleport from Saligo catches Zyko mid flash and Lulu down wild card have a champion advantage for this dragon fight so Maryville they just back off yeah, you gotta remember that when Azir goes for that ultimate, right? He's throwing it back. He's throwing it back, and he catches it right behind him as well. Wildcard will get this second dragon of the game. Uh oh. Rut row! Ah, oh, punishing Saligo yet again. Ooh! The death brush from Get Back and Odd Orange catching Azir on rotation. I'm gonna be honest, Steve, this game looks like a game from 2018 with new champions, right? We are seeing so many of these things that feel like I called them lost arts, the crazy freeze happening up in the top lane, catching people in rotation, trying to find these different plays as they go from one lane back to their home lane. These are things that we have not seen from teams in a long time, and they are preying so heavily on everything that each team is trying to do. Sligo tried to make this play yesterday and got Got caught really heavily, but this time as they go for it again, scooping up Lulu, throwing them back towards the rest of the team. It works out this time. But as we saw immediately afterwards, he got caught trying to go back home. And the next wave will shove in because Static Shiv on the block is such insane wave clear. Zuligo won't even make it back in time to catch that one. Lens will actually lane swap into the mid lane now. So Legal will head towards the bottom lane. So Wildcard trying to shift up where everybody's assignments are as Zamudo is still ahead in the top lane. Everything else around the rift struggling a little bit here. Bot lane is holding out pretty even against Scary Jerry, but that is still a Cole completed with the Triforce yeah. on Zeri. So she is getting towards that critical mass. 
It's going to be a little while, and just as we were looking at last game when Lens was piloting this area, it's a different problem, right? Last game was there's too many things for Lens's area to try and deal with, and also you were getting outranged by everything else. This is one where there's still a lot of rage coming up from Wildcard. You're getting outranged by the Azir. You can be outranged by the Zaya if Scary Jerry has to play forward in a lot of these different fights, and so... It is going to be another tough game for Jerry to try and pilot the Zarya in a lot of these moments, but I mean, the rhyme exists, and if it rhymes, it must be true, right? Scary Jerry's Zary is going to carry. He does love this champion. And also, was performing very well in the last game, performing well so far this game. Scary Jerry's one of those players on this collegiate roster that is looking to make it to that next step in competitive play, not just in CLO, but at the pro level. And it is tough as a collegiate player to make that jump. It is rare. Oh, get the, back! Uh, um, collegiate players get back, jumps in onto Lens, forces the Zaya ultimate out. So Lens will not have that for this next potential Herald fight. As Saligo now finds get back, makes a good chunk, but dishes it right on back. Who's yeah. at the Herald though? It is secured for Wildcard. Wow. Honestly, crazy that with all the other little fights going on, we didn't even really look at the Rift Herald, because Wildcard is the team that will walk away with that. But that feels like it's staunching the bleeding more than anything else. There is, the Rift Herald goes towards the top side. Lens is still getting caught. Ooh, doesn't have the ultimate this time around. Ghost and Flash down. Odd Orange on top of him. Claims the kill. As Amuda will get the turret up here. Okay. How's Odd Orange escaping? He does not. Saligo gets on top of him, trades the kill. But Keel goes down too. So one for two trading kills. Maryville trading up, but they do lose the turret. And now Zamuto finds Niles all alone right here. Goes up the ultimate. Should not be enough oh, to kill. The ult. Meganar keeps Niles alive. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Super clutch from Zyko to get there and make sure that Niles yeah. can live. Buys enough time for the Mega to come through. And so Wildcard, I mean, they're trading back and forth. They're only down 1,000 gold. And oh, 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 this is the best Damn part of Oxshot. Now, the and first time I ever experience Auction. I was playing with or against uh, Kopari, I believe, like a collegiate mid laner for a long time. And every single time he would press the W and go invisible, he would type in all chat, go in rogue. They would just <laughs> pop up somewhere random on the map. And then afterwards, you know, even though he was like 10 and 10, right? 10 kills, 10 deaths. He was like, guys, I think this champion sucks. And we we're like, maybe it's because you have 150 farm at 35 minutes. <laughs> Maybe it's because you have all chats still turned on. You know? <laughs> Let's get another look at this. The dive under turret as we yeah. caught the Herald charge afterwards. Let's see Why what happens else elsewhere. Oh, oh, Keel was away from the play when he goes down. Yeah. So it's an entirely different play. Dom Bray, he's fast enough, but the Crying Mummy is left with no friends. Was a little bit surprised. See, I had expected that Keel got killed trying to pick up Otto. Yeah. But happy we were able to at least see what happened there. Yeah. Seemed like maybe they were just sticking around a little too long after the Herald yeah. play. Maryville were still on the rift in that river. Right place, right time, get the kills. But back to live. 1,000 gold lead for Maryville overall. As they have slain this outer mid tier yeah. turret, this gives them a lot of control for the dragon. A wild card, right? They have not been the best team at interrupting people's setups when they've been playing with Zabuto, right? That was a specialty of Moose Hater. But now a wild card, they have Keel just going through. Four is a flash out from Zyko. But look at get back position. He's in the Big perfect flank spot. On the block, damage on the lens. Chunks him to about half health here. And with Keel the goes. range of the Nar as well, they hard commit. Get back trying to catch up. Lens focus down, has the ultimate. Gets to safety. How can Saligo carry this? Does not land the Emperor's Divide onto anybody. And Niles with a massive Gnarl. Double kill over to Scary Jerry. And Maryville runs circles around this team fight. Wild card with no response. They got on orange, and that is it. One for five ace for Maryville. Look, Maryville might be hitting their goals early. They said they wanted three wins this weekend. They are on the road to pick up a 2-0 up against Wildcard. And when we take a look at the replay, everything possible went right for Maryville in this last fight, right? Lens does not get his ult off when he gets counter-engaged. Keel, as he goes in, the one person he needs to catch, Scary Jerry, comes through, but the cleanse comes, and there is no re-engage. Scary Jerry is not hitting, but Lens ults so late in this, ends up dying anyway, and then Sligo catches a grand total of zero people. 
Then Zamuda tries to get onto Scary Jerry. Is one auto attack away, but Scary Ooh. Jerry gets over the wall again. Every single thing that they were trying to throw at Scary Jerry, he dodges. He gets out of the ultimate from the Amumu. He gets away from the ultimate from Azir. He gets away from the Akshan. It is not possible to play when Scary Jerry is able to dodge every single one. 3-0-2 on the Zeri. The AD carry scary Jerry is popping off right now. It might just get Maryville their third yeah. win of the weekend. The goal that he himself said is what they were eyeing. Donbrey also didn't even go down in that last fight, so shout out to the support for making it out, but everybody else went down. And that's a big gold lead now for Maryville, as, as, along with the dragon that they now have in their pocket. And do they look Ooh. for more here? Saligo here has divide onto Niles. Now Odd Orange commits onto him. That's a dead Azir. You see that from Dombre? You see that? He goes and he's like super close. He's like, mm, nah, sorry, Saligo. Yeah. You're just gone. <laughs> Good luck. Now Wildcard, they're looking for a re engage. Kill his ultimate. Okay, Dombre, this time, this is his moment. He was waiting. Sacrifice Saligo to give the opponents a false sense of security and now re engage. Claim Niles' is life, but everyone else from MU are still up here. They will get the turret, continue the chase. Kill jumps in. Curse to the Run. side, Mummy. To lock down a couple members, but that's not the ideal use of that. They're running away right now. The zap's coming through. Scary Jerry and get back putting in work right now. Yeah, just hitting Keel in the back of the head. There's not a whole lot that the Mummy can do. Zamudo seeing if he can find any stragglers, but I mean, Zamudo, for as well as he was playing the lane individually, was not Ooh. able to overcome the fact that this was a game of fives, right? But he's in comms. Vi was able to come up and make sure he's not skyrocketing ahead. And as he continues to hunt for stragglers, uh -oh. he's going rogue. This is big for Zamudo. Seen Zyka right there and jumps on top of him. Uh, Gross is available. Wait till the last second, Zamudo. Oh, oh. gets him. Zyko goes down. I love it. I love this play coming through from Zamudo, right? We were saying that he was looking so confident on things like the Gragas just walking around. Now, playing like a little bit of a rat, trying to find his way in, but get back still very strong as teleports are committed to stop the Baron. Niles is coming in here. Lens Roll can't get in. Rage bar. Wild Lens Carter on the Baron. Get back jumps onto Saligo. Lens is coming in here. They don't have the DPS on it, so Wild Carter taking this very slow. Maryville making it into the pit. They take down oh, scary, Jerry. scary Jerry jumps over the wall, gets back to safety. It's stolen. Maryville get the Baron. And they still have their carries relatively safe. Get back and Scary Jerry can get away. Baron buff will help them get back and Wildcard get punished for their zeal Ooh. at the objective. Oh, so Ligo's still up though. But is going happening. rogue. Oh, the Krugs. Okay. Oh, they don't know. Oh, he doesn't they know. Don't know. Oh, get back. Had the vision sees the enemy top laner. Dombray will stop the back. Saligo looks to chase down, but who's chasing who? Get back has so much burst. Scary Jerry still here. Oh no, lands! Oh, no! Scary Jerry with the covenant. Oh, okay. the feather recall takes him down though. Are we done? Okay, no. what's, how is this place still happening? What is going on right now? Okay, get back should be out of there now. What a chaotic couple of plays. Dude, this, is, this has been so much fun to watch. I am just, Really enjoying oh, watching wait. Maryville go for all these kind of things. And now, Aldrin's is up two levels on Keel. This mummy cannot fight them. Yeah, but he's also all alone. Okay, he's got the blast cone. He's out of there. Yeah, fine, I was like, everybody fine. else is resetting. Aldrin's <laughs> just going to steal yeah. the blue buff. Let's okay. Take a look at this. Look at where Lens is, right? As we called out, I mean, that 3,000 damage, Lens would have done 3,000 damage if they were hitting from the beginning. But Wildcard starts it up without it. And then it becomes about whether or not these two marksmen will be able to clean up. But again, as Zamudo goes in trying to take down Scary Jerry, he gets over the wall another time, not able to take him down. And because Kiel goes down early, there's no smite to contest Odd Orange in the fight. And Donbrey is not able to lock down Scary Jerry either. Went for yeah. the jungler rather if, than the AD carry. Ooh. Ooh if possible, I back. actually would love to get uh, the highlight of Zamudo dying at the end of that play. I don't know if it's too late for that because there is a big reason why Zamudo doesn't go around that corner, which I would love to talk about. But we do need to see it for it to make sense. As we take a look at what's going on, Wildcard in thorough control of this game. They can go pick up the uh, Chemtech Dragon if they want, but honestly, who cares about that dragon? Wildcard are struggling to find their way in. Their only real hope from this position is Saligo going nuts in a fight, right? This Azir is yet again a scaling DPS threat, not really a poke threat, trying to stay in the fight for as long as possible. 
But that's so hard. Look at how mobile this Maryville team is. Not gonna get a lot of time to actually do that damage. Just get back with the Baron buff, takes a full turret. He's out. He's surrounded Fine. by everybody. Gets away from the Emperor's Divide, but cannot escape Don Bray. Wow. And has right. kill credit over to Saligo. It is a shutdown. I thought he was fine, but I mean, when you bring all five members, you are able to take it down. The mid lane turret is dropped. The dragon is going to get picked up, and we can see that the gold lead for Maryville is continuing to flow in this game. 5,000 gold up already. Niles has gotten enough kills, has participated in enough to actually be able to split push going up against Zamudo at this point. This mid lane turret being up has also been crucial for Maryville's success because they don't have to worry nearly as much about Zamudo moving between this mid lane from one side of the jungle to the other, hunting people as they go. Wildcard in this much more chaotic gameplay are just being outclassed by Maryville who have been used to this style for much longer. Baron buffs down. Oh, they catch Zamudo now. Spotted from the Scryer's Bloom and trigger pulled by Odd Orange and Scary Jerry. They don't even have the Akshan pressure anymore. There's no big objectives on the Rift for Maryville to really punish with. Yep. But they can now reestablish control over these side lanes that were pushing into them. And Zamudo being off the map means less resources going into the Akshan as well. Yeah. They're doing a good job, right? I, I love watching the fluid gameplay from. Uh, Maryville, right? This is how they love playing when both teams have to be dropping waves over and over again to go for these plays. I mean, Maryville are playing in their comfort zone. They've been doing a fantastic job moving around and getting get back ahead has kind of been that secret sauce they've kind of needed in order to really make this game feel kind of over, right? The way that Get Back has been moving around, he got a couple of kills in the mid lane as continuing to balloon them. And also, thank God, he's going for a real damage build in the Rabadons coming through and the Magi's because he is so safe. How does Wildcard even get to him? How do they take him down? They have to devote five members to just kill him. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't notice that Magi's was completed before he got picked in the top lane. I assume it was because he's still at nine stacks. And I don't think he's participated in a kill since then if my memory serves me correct. But either way, once he has that rabbit on, that's going to be a lot of AP. And a reminder that Shiv will scale off of that. So that proc will be one-shot waves. The pressure on the map will not get easier for a wild card, nor will their survivability, because Obank will just be able to one-shot these squishy members. Yeah, and even Lens, who was given this Zaya as a direct response to the Vi, does not interact particularly well with the uh, LeBlanc, right? LeBlanc just goes in, presses Q, gets an auto attack off, and is like, okay, cool, well, there's half your health. I'll see you again in 10 seconds when my right. abilities are off cooldown. And so, Get Back has so much control over what it is that Lens is trying to do. We were asking whether or not Wildcard was going to be able to respond to this now that Lens has to take a larger uh, larger role in a lot of these team fights as the primary damage dealer. And so far, Maryville has done a really good job this series not letting him. They've made him super, super uncomfortable. They're not seeing a pocket created for Lens in ways where they have to set up because Maryville is just constantly asking questions right before the dragon spawns. For Wildcard, if they want to get back into this, I imagine it's going to be some big combo. The Amumu ult on the multiple members, locking down all yeah. the different threats that Maryville have with probably yeah, the Azir shuffle on top of it, but it's just going to be so tough. Yeah. You see all that damage that went down on Sligo? Oh, Dombre! Ooh, has to pop the quickness and run away. Where's the teleport? Where's oh, the there teleport it is. comes in. Okay, maybe they can lock down Niles. They got him! That's a good start. Dombre jumps in on the Scary Jerry as well. Jungler down, top laner down. Scary Jerry will not have the Lulu ultimate anymore. It was already popped. Lens flashing in aggressively. Rather recall doesn't get him, but Scary Jerry's gonna oh go down. Oh my god! Out. And the shuffle! From Saligo, right when I said no it, way, no way. Find their play. Get back jumps back in there, almost goes down. Maryville just threw everything at Wildcard with that teleport play, and they get hard punished. What can get back get done here? Not much. Baron secured for Wildcard. No way. Wildcard now suddenly with so much gold that came off of it. They have so many turrets they can pick up. The gold lead that Maryville have had for this entire game is about to evaporate. Wildcard, it looks really tough here. It looks like Dombre is getting caught. But this is a summit teleport, right? This is what Team Liquid LCS. We're struggling with so much. He is 1v5. He gets charmed immediately. 
does, he gets the ult off, but it only hits heal. And after that, there is not enough pressure coming out from Scary Jerry. Is not able to hit, does not have the front line, does not have the confidence to go aggressive. And he's just getting outraged from all of these members. When you get shoved back, right into this corridor, that's the opportunity for Saligo to go aggressive. They pick up the kill under Scary Jerry, they pick up Psycho as well, they should get the mid lane, they should get the bot lane, they should get another turret in both of those lanes. Wildcard should have a goal lead after this. Solid performance from all members of Wildcard. Don Bray even surviving through it. Deathless on the Rakan. I was critical in the last game, and over the weekend, we weren't sure what effect Don Bray was having on the team. He is the newest member. Zamudo getting caught in a silent, but does escape. And now maybe oh, Don Bray will Kiel. do it again here. It's Keel that starts it off. Don Jerry. Bray follow up, engage, double knock up. That's the engage wild card are looking for. That's the carry and support oh. down. Wild card can push right on into the base, but it might be a race. Niles is pushing the top turret. Zamudo's back. Zamudo is back. This is a 4v2 for the base of Maryville. Niles has no teleport, will take the long time to get back, and Zamudo is hunting him. He's going rogue, has already found the little yordle. Jumps on top of Niles. Niles is trying to escape. Meanwhile, on the big screen here, we see Wildcard pushing for the end. 20 seconds until Scary Jerry is up, and there's not a lot of wave clear. Get back's gonna have to put in overtime right now. First turret down, Odd Orange in trouble. Has to jump away, Dombre does not lock him down. Might have been enough time. They've cleared most up. of the wave. Get back, now hunting. Low health bars, doesn't get the kill. But that bought enough time. Scary Jerry's coming up, Zyko's already up. This is not the end of the game yet. Somehow Niles is still getting hunted by Zamudo over here. The dragon's up and Niles is still alive. Zamudo's not finding the little yordle. Wow. I mean, Niles getting out, small victory there, but what did we say? Wildcard now has a gold oh, lead there. Oh, I don't want to Okay, yeah, they get the extra dragon okay. off of it as well. And wow, this is one of those moments that you go back, you talk to your coach, and you know exactly. You know exactly. You can pinpoint to the call. You can pinpoint to the buttons that were pressed where this game went wrong for Maryville. They were well on track to get three wins in their first four games. And now, Wildcard, they have the tools. They have Saligo now on three and a half items. Lens is doing well against Zamudo. I mean, has to have enough gold, but the real hero of so much of this has been Keel at the end of it, right? We've seen what he can do on this move. He's playing something more unusual, and he is catching Zyko. He is catching uh, Scary Jerry over and over again. Speaking of catching, it's Odd Orange's time. You? Okay, ball oh. breakers to safety. Dodges out on everything. That was two bandage tosses and the grand That's entrance huge. from a Rakan. So well done, Odd Orange there, sticking yeah. alive. Playing on the Razor's Edge as Kiel will land this one. They're just poking each other. Get back, that's a lot of poke though. Yeah. I mean, Odd Orange has been the hero for Maryville. He's taken a lot of situations that were hugely losing throughout week one and turning them into things that were potentially playable. He was the biggest overperformer from before. Now. In this game, I'm still looking at get back, right? He was doing a fantastic job in the first half of the game in order to try and find leads and get these dives onto players like Saligo. He's been quiet since then. 6-1-4 has been a score for a long time. Scary Jerry now, three items as well. Get back is often the last remaining member <laughs> in the last yeah. couple of plays where he's the only one still up trying to output a little bit of damage, so he's still sticking with those Magi stacks, but has not been pushing the envelope in what Maryville's able to get done so far. And you look over to the side of Wildcard, and Zamudo is hitting towards his fourth item on Akshan. I have seen late game Akshans in my games, and from my experiences, if you are a LeBlanc, if you are a Zeri, you're now actually the one in threat of just getting one shot from all this crit coming through from the damage, and Akshan can just spit out so yeah. fast. And I feel like I know what is going on with both teams, right? You know, it started off with Maryville. You know, they're playing Smash. They're all sitting back. Everything is going fine. Then the teleport happens. Everybody gets quiet, furrows their brow, hunching forward, staring at the screen very intently. That's how Maryville has to be playing from this point. But they're on the wrong side of the map. They are going to be Ooh, late. Zamudo. And uh-oh, uh-oh. No, I mean, He's wrong gone. side of the map. Mar Maryville are hunting right now, and they caught him. Going rogue in the wrong way, Zamudo. <laughs> Just gets picked off. Was not expecting Maryville members to be there. I mean, I wouldn't have expected them to be there either, if I'm going to be honest. But it ends up paying off. I said Maryville were in the wrong spot. They end up being in the perfect position. 
catch Zamudo, and that buys a lot of time for Maribel to get back out on the map. We have a Baron spawning in 30 seconds, and Zamudo will not be there to go for the set. We've seen Wildcard try and set up for these 4v5 anyway. But it looks like they are now going to be seeding the control uh -oh. around the Baron. Don Ray channeling the back. Oh, he has to cancel it and jump back to the team. Keel has to run away too. Maryville are stopping these resets. Wildcard, we're trying to spend. Let's do quick inventory. 10 seconds till Baron. We have stopwatches on the top half of the map for Maryville. We have Zonias and stopwatch on the carries for Wildcard. Both of these teams trying to do their best to get ready for this fight, but Maryville are on the Baron first. Yeah. Keel around the back of the pit. This is where you move in order to try and go for the Megan engage. Arc. No Meganar, Maryville do not like this fight anymore. You have Whoa. to wait for that to come back up for Niles. Maybe try and stack up this Rage Bar off the top wave, but it's not even coming in. He's gonna back and teleport. Look for a flank, there's one around the back of the pit. It's just gonna be a little gnar. He can actually Whoa. stack up the Rage Bar on the bottom wave though, and that's quickness pop by Dombre. So that like oh, the idea. big ultimate's not available now. Look at where Odd Orange is. He's looking for his mood on the far side of the fight, but now they don't know that Odd Orange is behind them. Oh, Saligo goes in, jumps right onto Saligo. Emperor's Divide is not the one you're looking for. Now they turn back into Odd Orange, though. Teleporting from Niles, that is a Mega Nar. Has Flash available. Keel trying to lock everybody down, but he's the one getting locked down instead. Stunned up, taking down Scary Jerry. Jumping over the wall, looking for a lot of damage. Zamuda jumps right on top of him, but Zyko flashes with the Wild Growth and get back, jumps onto the enemy support. Traded for Scary Jerry, but Lens should go down right here. Oh. Zamudo, you're gonna have to oh, put a lot oh. of work into the reset. Zamudo doing it! He's Massive dead. damage! Triple kill! Looking for even more and brings back Lens and Keel with the Ixshan passive. Zyko and Get Back are in full retreat oh. mode. Teleport out Teleport. from Get Back just to survive. Oh my god, that tempo revives that coming in huge. from Zamudo. He brings two people back. They are in the base. They got the Baron and all of it. that as well. Everybody's coming through. Wildcard are here to try and end the game. And Zamudo, the hero that Wildcard needed. Get back. You gotta earn it. You've been set up. You're 8 1 and 6. You have to Let's save the it. game. 21 Meshai stacks almost pops Zamudo in one shot. But here comes Saligo. That stopwatch down. Zoni is out from get back. Jumps back in one. to the carries. Takes down one, but he falls. That's the game. Wild card do it. The comeback victory. Denying Maryville their second win of the day. And they will split the series 1-1. One, one. I think I have a new favorite game of this split already. That Whoa. one was so much fun for Whoa. both sides. It looked like Maryville was in control for so long, but one mistake was all it took to put Wildcard right back on in it. And it just kept delivering. I was not <laughs> expecting anything from this auction, but the triple kill, the reviving multiple people wins them the game. I don't even know if the reviving mattered. I don't think they made it into the screen for the end of that game. Zamuda was able to get the triple and then end the game almost by himself. Saligo was able to follow up and take down the kill on the get back at the end there. Who was so close to carrying on the LeBlanc? That was like an ideal setup for a LeBlanc game and just wasn't able to find the plays afterwards. You highlighted it, that one teleport play from Niles where they're trying to get onto Don Bray and then they lose the fight. That was the momentum shift the wild card needed. Yeah. You know, you go back into VOD review, coach asks, hey, do we need to talk about this point? You go, no. <laughs> we know what we did. <laughs> we, we know what we, happened. Yeah. We, yeah, it's the kind of thing that will haunt the Miraville players for a little while, but they end up going 1-1 today, and what we said was their hardest matchup in order to try and split the series. And we'll take a look at the post game really quick as well to see exactly what went down, because I do really want to highlight <sighs> Get Back was so close to carrying wow. that one. He had so many opportunities. It came up just short. Yeah, I. it's a rough position for a, a mid laner to look at that gold lead, look at your position in the game, and then, I mean, that that drop off of the cliff that we see on the gold graph was that Baron play. And everything got out of hand. Wildcard were able to just turn things around. And it was close at the end there still. Odd Orange got that really nice flank. Zamuto wasn't in the fight to start off but it wasn't enough. And uh, wild card, they, they stuck in it. The Akshan pick was huge. The Mudo popping off on it and showing us a little bit more of his champ pool. Happy to see it now. He's off of the Gragas duty, hopefully. Hopefully for now. But Steve, I think that's it. I want to hear from yep. the players. Yeah, we're going to send it to a short break before Beatdown is back with an interview of one of the winning members from wild card. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody, to the Horizon post-game interview. We have Don Bray, winning member of Wildcard, who managed to clutch it out in that second game. Don Bray, 
What a wild series. First of all, congrats on tying things up, getting the win. And immediately, the first thing I want to ask you is, you took a break from competitive in spring. Why don't you tell people why you did that? Um, I was in school and like, yeah, I didn't play competitive because I was taking classes. So you just yeah. wanted to, you just wanted to focus up, study up, everything like that. Yeah, I was still playing solo queue, like for fun. I, I actually hit rank one earlier this season, but uh, yeah. Take a big competitive. Still, I respect that. Focusing on your studies, and now you're on summer break. Now you're good to just play competitive. Yeah, pretty much. I got infinite free time, so love that. So now that you're on wild card, what's your experience been uh, with them so far? How how is it? Uh, it's pretty good. Like everyone's making me feel really welcomed, and mm -hmm. I can play whatever I want. So yeah, I really like it. I mean, yeah, this is wild card. Like, you, you got a spicy pick. They'll say, please, like, bring it to us. Are you, like, cooking anything spicy in the support role? Anything you can share or no? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying the, the Singe and the Yumi. Maybe, maybe I could try that. Ooh. Or, uh, the rest are kind of kind kind of, of not that good, but I think that one's pretty good. All right, cool. Well, thank you for sharing a, a little bit of the spice there. Who knows what we might see from wild card in the future. So I want to bring it back to game one real quick you guys were winning for a long time and then things kind of fell apart what what happened you were in their base two inhibitors were gone and then suddenly you lost the game uh we probably just inted yeah like we had a uh, full control of the game but yeah it was just kind of unlucky i didn't play too good either but it's all good it's all good okay, fair enough uh, the second game you guys pulled it together so what was your opinion on the game state? Roughly 20 minutes in, you guys were down several thousand gold. Did you always, did you have faith? Did you think you were going to lose? What was the team mental like at that moment? Uh, to be honest, I thought we were going to lose. Like I saw, I, I pressed have, I looked mid. My mid laner's down three levels, but we somehow won a fight. And then we just ended up winning the game off that pretty much. So, so yeah. Y yeah, I want to know what the comms were during that fight too, because... From what I remember, it's around 28 minutes, barren play. They chase you specifically on the Rakan, and uh, Niles makes a, an interesting teleport play. What what was the call like bef during the fight and then after? Uh, well, I was kind of baiting, and then like Nar TP'd in, so we all went on TP, mm -hmm. pretty much. Like we called to go on the TP, and then like uh, we just played the fight out after that, and it went out pretty well, so yeah. Yeah, was, uh, was there like that sense of relief the team feel better after that they're like oh my god like guys this is winnable we can't mess this up uh yeah i think so we probably felt a lot better nice okay so um i guess the next thing that i wanted to ask is now that you're back in competitive play it's been a bit since people have seen you but the fact is if you've been you know your real og you've been watching they know you've been around the block what are your goals specifically as a player how far do you really want to go uh uh, I don't know to be honest. Maybe, maybe, maybe LCS seems kind of kind of doomed, so I'm not really sure. But maybe I'll just, I'll just chill. Yeah. Yeah. Just chill take in the academy. Take whatever opportunities come your way, kind of deal. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little more about the support pool. You have your spicy picks, answers into the Yumi, but what do you think about Yumi and Milio overall? In your words, a lot of people say they're broken, really mm. hard to beat. What do you think? I think they're yeah they're completely broken. You rush Arden sensor. You hope your team is better. You sit on your ADC and you just win. Pretty much. Fair enough. And now, so, now uh, something I wanted to know from you as well is, do you think that, how well do you guys think you're going to do for the rest of the split? Now, I know you just joined. There's a lot of, uh, you know, ironing out. But, like, how do you feel you fit for the team? And how do you feel like you guys are going to do? Uh, Be as biased do... as you want. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to do pretty well. We have a, a pretty good team. Um, we still have to build synergy, but I think it's okay. All right, cool. I, I mean, we'll so, do pretty well. I mean, so far you guys have been doing pretty well. Before I let you go, Dawnbray, is there any shoutouts that you want to give team, players, family, whatever? Shout out to like probably my family, my mom, she supports me. Nice. Um, my team, my te yeah, my team. I think that's it. Yeah, probably that's it. Yeah, hey, dog too. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Shout out your family. Shout out your dog. That's going to be it for Dawn Bray. And that's going to be it for the Horizon post game interview. We're going to go for a short break. And then once we come back, we're going to have our second series of the day. Don't go anywhere.